Hey, 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 yeah. I bet you didn't know I could semi-sing. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. And today's topic is how to destroy your relationship or anything in three easy steps. Okay, and I need you I need you to vote. So no light or yes light. Yes light? No light. Yes light? No light. And for those of you listening, I am playing and fucking with my light. You're welcome. Um <laughs> going to do no likes. I don't really feel like squinting today. So welcome to my front porch in Georgia. Um, I love, 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 love this state right now. I'm in love with this state. No light too. Okay, Paige, I'm with you. And um, it is fall and the, we have more birds coming to our front porch and my windows. So I will have birds flying up to my windows. My office is like right up there. And um, just like anyway they, they cling onto the screen and the animals are starting to come anyway it's so beautiful here and i did some research on the forest around here and it, it, it was literally called the enchanted forest hey guys and uh it's the chattahoochee national forest now here in uh in georgia but anyway i'm so grateful to be here and i'm so glad you guys are here and Blah, 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 blah. Hi, Wesley. Um, let's talk about how to destroy your relationship in three easy steps. Because why drag it out when you could just do it, right? <laughs> All right, so you guys know that I have been talking my face off about projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. And today is no different. I'm also going to talk my face off, except I might keep this bit here because this is kind of nice. I... As I was just getting ready for the class that just started today, so I just started a class today called "Getting 37 Days of Getting Over These, which is not nearly enough because it's really a lifetime of becoming willing to be aware of where you function from. But I started looking at like how dynamically that I have done this over the course of my life and how much I've destroyed using them. <laughs> So I thought I would share that with you a little bit and give you some tools that you can start to use with yourself and um, make it make it a little easier that if you really want to destroy your relationship, just keep doing what you're doing. And if you don't, if you start getting like more awake and you're like, well, maybe I don't actually want to destroy this, then maybe there's some tools that'll change it. So <laughs> I'm looking down at my computer. So we get to, so here's the thing. So projections and expectations separate you from your awareness. Now, I read that as that's chapter one in the Pez Jr. book. Pez Jr.'s stand for projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. And yes, I'm talking way too fast because I'm just assuming most of you have bought the book. Have you bought the book? Go buy the book. It's on Kindle. Go buy the book. It's going to change your life. If you have not bought the book, that is probably one of the best investments you can make in your relationship future, business future, money future, life future ever. Aside from signing up for my 37 day class, which somebody's going to put the link for in the comments as I'm talking. Whenever you're doing projection and expectation of any kind, you are separating and judging and rejecting anything that would give you awareness. Anything, okay, okay, fine. You're eliminating your awareness, that's pretty severe. Okay, good, Jamie Joy, I'm glad. So listen, what the fuck are these things and why the fuck do they destroy everything? Okay, hi Shruti, hi Louise. Projections and expectations are what you think someone else will do even though they aren't going to do it. Projections and expectations are what you think someone else will do even if they aren't going to do it. So guess what that means, that whole sentence. That means that as soon as you project and expect that somebody's going to do it, you already fucking know they're not going to do it. You already know it. You already know it. You wouldn't be projecting and expecting that they do it unless you secretly already knew that they weren't going to do it. So then there is this other conversation, and I know I'm going outside of the three steps, but I can never stick to a list. There's this other conversation that's like, okay, so that's really interesting that I already know and I'm still doing this thing so that I can separate, judge, and reject. And here is where you destroy your relationship in three easy steps. First of all, you project that this person's going to do the thing that you know they're not going to do. You expect it to happen even though you know they're not going to do it so that you can judge them, separate from them, and reject them. Success! <laughs> You've done it! You've destroyed something! Yay! All right? 
And we do this everywhere. This happens in the micro moments, in the major moments, in the not so major, all the places. We do this in all the places, okay? How much do you project and expect that when you put a class on the books, that it will do something that you already know it's not gonna do just by putting it on the books? So then when that class doesn't create, which you already knew was gonna happen based on what you were already planning on not doing or showing up as, then you get to separate, judge, and reject, and then you have a reason and a justification to leave your life or to leave the relationship, and it's all okay because he or they or it didn't deliver what it is that you projected and expected it should deliver, those fuckers. So this is the way, you know that phrase, would you rather be free or would you rather be right? Would you rather be right or free? It's something we ask in Access a lot. Would you rather be right or free? And everybody goes, I want to be free. I want to be free. Uh-huh. Okay. So if freedom meant you had to be aware of where you function from 24-7 and aware of where other people function from 24-7, if that's what freedom required of you, would you actually choose it? Or would you rather be right? So here's how we do that. So we project and expect that our mate should deliver on these things. And then we, we're right because he doesn't. So we get to separate, judge, and reject him and us and the relationship. And we're completely justified in our own minds. Well, I told him, I told him that if he didn't do this, then this was going to happen. And he didn't do it, so now this is going to happen. 100% of the time when you've told him that this is going to happen, if the blah, 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 in that energy, you already know he's not going to deliver that. And you're using that as the reason and the justification to destroy the relationship. Now listen, none of this makes you wrong. I am an expert at this. <laughs> Do you need, if you ever think that you are lacking in lessons on how to destroy things, you just come talk to me. I'm an expert. I did this, this was my entire second marriage, was projecting and expecting that he be all these things for me that he, he was never going to be. He didn't even start out being that. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Cynthia. That was never going to happen. But for some reason in my own world, if I projected and expected that he was going to do these things, then I was justified in judging and separating and rejecting. If I created the projection and the expectation in my world, then I was justified that I do those things. Well, that's fine. It can be justified all day long. Is that is that what I wanted to create? Yes or no? Am I willing to just get honest with myself about what really works for me? And in that particular relationship, this was probably, this was a while back now. This is probably 10 or 11 years ago when we first got married. But one of the things I had to start getting really present with, with that whole schmozzle of shit, was that I didn't actually want to get clear on what worked for me. It worked for me way better to have a problem with my current relationship than it did to actually get clear on what I wanted and what I didn't want. Why? Because if I actually had got clear on what I wanted and didn't want it, I'd, I'd be fully in the driver's seat of my own reality creating my life. <laughs> Who wants that when you can actually blame somebody else for what they're not delivering that you said and they said they were going to deliver? So here's the other place where this really trips us up or we are choosing an awareness with this is when just because somebody says, hi Nikki, hi Anna, just because someone says they're going to do something means fuck all. People say things all the time. Do you guys ever say things that you don't mean? Where you're like, um, I'm totally going to do that. I'm, I'm choosing that class. Here's a, here's, a great, here's a great example. I'm going to that class. I'm having it, right? Cool. Are you actually having it? Are you saying it because in that moment, saying it's the popular thing to say? Are you saying it because in that moment, it's the conscious thing to do? Are you saying it because you really wish that you wanted to choose it, but you really have no interest in choosing it? There's so many different things that go on with stuff that we say. So we say things all the time that we have no intentions of actually delivering on. Oh yeah, I'm totally gonna do that. We should totally get together and have lunch. Yeah, you know those moments? You have no, there's no choice there. There's nothing actually going to occur there. But I mean, that's kind of the tepid social end of the pool. Then there's the other end of that that's like, um, you hire somebody 
and and you guys are excited about each other you're like you're excited oh my god I finally found the one I found the one that's gonna take all this stuff off my plate oh my god I'm so relieved right which isn't a question which isn't awareness which isn't a willingness to actually be aware of what that person's gonna deliver so that person gets into your business and they do what it is whatever they do and guess what gets to happen on your end that you projected and expected that they're gonna actually deliver what they said they're gonna deliver and they don't ever actually people only either over deliver or under deliver so then you get to separate judge and reject them and you and your business that's how to destroy anything in three easy steps so what the fuck do you do with yourself then? because <laughs> I know some of you are like for some of like for me this was a massive topic this was something I had to look at across the board because it was how I functioned dynamically all the time and for me the bigger story was I was at the effect of everybody and everything so I was at the effect of my husband who wasn't doing what he should do. And I was at the effect of money being hard for me. And I was at the effect of um, I couldn't do things other people can do. I put myself at the effect of everything. Why? I, I didn't want to create my life. But I couldn't even see that, right? Like I couldn't even like get present with that as a reality. It was just, but when you looked at it now, it's like, I didn't want to know all that because if I knew all that I was actually empowered who wants to be empowered when you can be a victim <laughs> that's my basic point of view <laughs> but I didn't call it that because calling it that was not nearly as sexy as saying I had standards standards was like a way sexier thing I have standards I have things that I expect in a good relationship a good relationship has certain things that it has in place I have standards and I'm not going below those standards that was the writer way to be a victim guess what standards allow you to do judge and project and, res and, and expect and separate and reject that's what standards actually are so with my standards I got to be frustrated by everybody I got to be alone, I got to have my space, and I got to not succeed over and over and over. And there's this conversation that eventually I'm going to have with you guys of like, what am I actually choosing to justify other people's realities? There's this whole thing of like things that we choose that justify everybody else's reality about us, about business. Like I got to not be successful over and over and over and it was never, it didn't have to be my fault. So projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections ensure in, at least in your own world that nothing is your fault it's not my fault my life's not working he told me it was gonna be this way and now it's not that way and I don't know what to do now not my fault they said and now it's not and now I'm up shit creek not my fault so not my fault is a creation is a creation and that was a bit of a bitch for me to look at that started showing up for me in ways of like, I, I used to be frustrated with everybody. I was frustrated by everything. Yes, exactly, Wendy, and yes, Nikki. I was frustrated by everything. I was frustrated by how slow everybody moved. I was frustrated how I was smarter than everybody. I was doing so much superior bitch, it was crazy. But it was justified in my mind because reason, 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 reason. So this frustration with everybody and everything gave me so it gave me so much in my own world it let me be right pr primarily and really when I finally 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 was really willing to get present with do you want to be right or do you want to be free in the beginning with that I was like well right means I, I put a definition to what right meant It's like well I, I definitely want to be free because I'm definitely not right I didn't feel right it was so weird but I finally started to see, no, I want to be right about my projections and expectations because they allow me to separate, judge, and reject, which gives me this other place where nothing is my fault. So I actually needed to be right about those. So this whole thing of being frustrated by everything like gave me this place where I could just be right all the time. I was right about that person being slow. I was right about stupid drivers. I was right about stupid people. I was right about, I mean, I got frustrated about so many things. I was right. And so there I was, sitting alone in my fucking office, frustrated and alone, right. And that's when it started, like, that's when I started really, like, uh, looking at this. I was like, okay, okay, so I'm right. Well, that's, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's creating a life that works for me? 
Because right now, here's my life. I need to be, I'm frustrated almost all the time. I'm irritated with everybody and I'm not actually having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. I get that that's been normal for me for a really long time. Is that the, I'm now having, this is my life. So now, good, congratulations, here's your life. You get to be frustrated and irritated and alone. <laughs> I was like, that's when it started hitting me. I was like, um, yeah, that, never looked at it like that. Never looked at that like that was what I was creating with this. I sort of thought I just being right was the thing. And I was like, well, no, actually that's not really, that's not really working that well. And any conversation that we have about access tools comes back to, are you creating a life that really works for you? Sometimes this gets really weird and backwards and it's like, well, yeah, actually feeling frustrated all the time and rejecting everything and being the victim does really work for me. It sounds fucked up, but it's working for me. It, it lets me be right. <laughs> right? Which is working for me more than actually creating a life that works for me. But it does, it can get to a point where it's like, I am in, I'm having my life. This is my life. I, I used to say this a lot, actually. It's funny. That's kind of gone away now. But I'm like, this is my life. I am in it right now. Nobody else is going to create this for me. Nobody else is going to change this for me. I'm the one that creates all of it. What is it that I actually want to be having here? Do I want to be mad about everything? Am I, do I, am I, I really, really, really love being the victim? I mean, I get I've loved it because I've chosen it. Do I want to keep doing that? Am I really the victim of everybody else's stupidity? Is that really true? Is that where I want to keep living and creating from? God, maybe not. But I had to first look at the fact that I was doing it. And I was doing it constantly, 24 seven. And really giving up being right was my biggest. And that still to this day, I, there was a whole probably three or four or five month period where everything I looked at, I wanted to be right in. I want to be right there and I want to be right. And, and literally every single point where I wanted to be right, I was creating a difficulty. So I was create at, at every difficulty in my life with this person, with that person, with this team, with that dazzle, with that creation, every single point of difficulty was me needing to be right. And it didn't matter what it was right about. I just wanted to be right about it. I wanted to be right that I was the victim. I wanted to be right that my projections and expectations weren't met. And so therefore, I wanted to be right about the judgment. I wanted to be right about feeling rejected. I wanted to be right. It was everywhere. I was like, oh, this wanting to be right is everywhere. I'm destroying things with it. How's it get better than that? <laughs> that's, but that's the easy way to destroy everything. You just project and expect that it should be a way that it never will be. So Paige, when it's all the time, how do you stop? You literally have to just become willing to be aware of where you're functioning from all the time. And that's it. So one of the tools that I use with any difficulty, any difficulty, any frustration, any irritation, any feeling of victim, any of that stuff, any feeling at all, you can run this. How many, hi Mary, how many projections and expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections do I have creating this? And everything that is right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nature, it's boys and beyonds. I goddamn guarantee you at every point of difficulty in your life, you have created a projection and an expectation and you are separating, judging, and rejecting you and the other person 1000% of the time. Absolutely no ifs, ands, or buts. Which makes it really easy to find them. <laughs> because <laughs> for the places that are working in your life, you don't need to look at those. But how many of you guys have 1800 areas that aren't working for you in the way that you would like them to work? Okay, cool. How many projections, expectations, separations, judgments, or rejections do you have creating those? Would you be willing to just start to get present with how uncomfortable it might be that you are functioning from those and creating the difficulty? That for me was the bitch of it all. I was like, God, you mean it isn't other people that are being dumb that's creating this for me? It's actually me. I'm creating it. It's not their fault. It's actually me that's creating it. And that, that for me was the bitter pill to swallow. That for me was the thing that I didn't want to look at. I really, really, really desperately wanted it to be other people's fault. I'm just being honest. It needed to be, because it couldn't be me. It couldn't be me that was being insane. I was being right. 
these project and here's the something else that I got from my family these projections and expectations are reasonable this is something my mom taught me I was like this is a reasonable request this is reasonable to expect that it might be reasonable all day long is it actually gonna work that's it it might be reasonable it might be a thing sane people do it might be the thing you should do it might be the thing you actually desire are you willing to know that it's something you desire and not expect somebody who can't ever deliver it to deliver it for you how many of you guys are projecting and expecting somebody who can't ever deliver what it is you actually want to deliver what it is that you want so that you can separate and judge and reject you and them and you can prove your point of view the underlying point of view which is that nobody I can't ever get what I actually want I can't ever create it look I'll show you again I'll get with somebody else again that can't deliver it and I'll prove again that my underlying point of view is correct so how many underlying points of view are you proving with the projections expectations separations judgments and rejections of you are you choosing and everything that is will you destroy and create all that right wrong good bad pod puck all land shirts boys and beyond so it's super easy to destroy a relationship you just project that they can be something that they'll never be expect of them that they deliver it step two and step three separate from them judge them and reject them and you can do this over and over in the context of a relationship for as long as you're both willing to tolerate it you may want to look at if you guys are in a relationship family relationship or other relationship that this is going on a lot like when did I actually leave this relationship and am I using projections and expectations as the reason and justification to make it look good when I go to make it look fully justified when I actually choose to leave physically because that's something else we do with project see the, the whole thing about these Pez juniors is that they're just a creation and you can use them for anything you can use them to create you can use them to destroy anything you can use them to justify your position you can use them to uh, destroy something but then feel right about it like you can you just they're just a creation now that that I, that galled me I get it if, if that sticks you a bit if that pisses you off I'm glad it pissed me off but I was defending myself when somebody pointed that out, I don't remember when this was this was like I don't know six months after the access tools and this whole conversation I was like I'm not doing that <laughs> get all defensive that clearing of who or what are you defending for or against that if you didn't defend for or against it would give you all of you and everything that is we destroy it and create all that right wrong good bad pot block all lane shirts boys and beyonds and page you can put those in if you want so the whole conversation today has really been like in and around relationship in this reality that is projections Tez juniors are relationship in this reality a beyond this reality relationship just takes it all in it's just information where somebody functions from is just information um, it's just where they're functioning from the question becomes can this work and if you get a no and you're still trying to make it work you've decided that something needs to work that can't actually work it does not actually work for your car to have water in the gas tank your car will not drive with water in the gas tank it's not that gas water in your gas tank is wrong it just doesn't work that's it it's not that water in your gas tank is like an irresponsible choice it just doesn't work it's not that water in your gas tank is anything but that it doesn't work so when you do projections and expectations separation judgment it doesn't work to create a good relationship it destroys things always because you can only separate and you can only judge and you can only reject based on those so I'm not even saying you want your relationship to work some of you are like I'm trying to get out of my relationship and I'm doing as many Pez juniors as I can to justify me leaving except I can't leave because he's I'm broke so then I get to have a constant problem and I never have to create my life instead of if you just looked at the whole thing and go well that's a mess what's actually possible here that I haven't considered what choices do I have available here that I've never even looked at and if I were really choosing and really creating what worked for me what choices would I have available 
what if you actually got clear on what you require in a relationship and what you don't desire in a relationship? Make a list of eight things you require in a relationship and eight things you don't desire. Do not skip the list of what you don't desire because if you skip that list, you'll create both of them. What is it that you actually desire that you have been unwilling to get clear on? Do this with your business. What do you actually desire out of your business? What do you not desire in your business? What do you actually desire with money? What do you not desire with money? Get clear. The moment you're willing to get clear and choose the creation of a reality that works for you is the moment these projections and expectations and separation, and this whole way of functioning just slips away. The choice of, the choice towards, the creation of something different. Not different with the partner you're with, a reality that works for you. If you begin to choose a reality that works for you energetically, your partner will either come along or they will fall away. They will either take up the challenge of, oh wow, something's really shifted, I gotta step up, or they will fall away. That is true of everything. Your business will either change or it will fall away. Money will either change or the problems will fall away. Like that's not a great example with money, but that's, that's what happens. The choice for the creation of a different reality, everything else falls away or gets greater. So what is it that you're attempting to destroy and create with the projections and expectations and separations and judgments and rejections that if you weren't functioning from there would just open up the world of possibilities that you actually have available to you. You have choices available to you that you don't wanna know. If you're willing to know them, this can change. If you're willing to ask about them, this can change. If you're willing to actually have ease and joy and glory as your reality, this can change. You may not be. This may be a conversation you revisit in three years. But it is possible. I'm living it. And I guess I would leave you with the tool today of like all the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections creating this, whatever this is. I destroy and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. That right there with everything that you're doing right now, everything you're being, everything that comes up for you, every difficulty is going to start to create more space for you to be more aware of you. Only with awareness can you actually create your life. And choice creates awareness. Choice. So now you've got the awareness. Now you chose this stuff, all this stuff showing up. Now it's like, okay, well, what would I like to choose next? It'll give me different awareness. And that's the creation. That's the moving forward of a different reality for you. All right. If you got anything out of this, I'd be so grateful if you'd share it. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week.